What's up guys, it's Bnet from We Make Best and we're here for the Ryanair OTK deck tech. The game plan for this deck is attempting to either OTK your opponent or just send a huge unblockable attacks at them to gain an enormous health lead to which they can't recover from. And you can usually finish them off with a few strong attacks. This has become a viable game plan now since the release of Berserk. Berserk is a yellow pitch card that costs one and says until end of turn, whenever you discard a random card with six or more attack, banish it. And if you do, reveal the top card of your deck. If it has six or more power, you draw a card. Combining this with Blood Rush Bellows and or Golgan attacks such as Pulping, Wild Ride, Breakneck Battery, Barraging Big Horn, or Madcap Charger allows us to chain attacks, intimidate the opponent, and draw extra cards off Berserk. Additionally, on combo turns when you discard cards such as Beast Within or Skullcrack, you're able to keep chaining attacks due to the extra resources created from these cards. If you run out of cards but still have extra resources from these effects, we are able to gain an action point in advance with beaten trackers in order to attack with our weapons, mandible claws, or romping club. The main weapon. Ugh. Don't put that in the. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in the video. <laughs> The main weapon we run are Mandible Claws, as these are way better on combo turns due to having go again and getting buffed from Blood Rush Bellows. But Rumping Club makes the non-pop-off turns a lot stronger as a go again attack into Rumping Club is very high value. We also have a transformative sideboard for the Rumping Club. Our equipment loadout is Barkbone Strapping, Skull Horn, Skull Crushers and Beaten Trackers. This equipment blocks a lot worse than the normal Reinar loadouts, but has the highest utility on Berserk turns. Skull Crushers is mainly for the block value, but has the potential high roll with Barkbone Strapping. And Skullhorn is our only headpiece as on Berserk turns the discard replaces itself, essentially making it destroy it to draw a card. Beaten trackers are simply more reliable than scab skin leathers when we need that extra action point, and it allows us not to run gambler's gloves. These boots when paired with Savage Feast leads to extremely powerful turns. Dynasty also gave us access to Savage Beatdown, a crazy powerful chain ender that works perfect with all of our Golgan attacks. We've found this card to be extremely valuable to the deck's success, so we've also opted into playing Tear Limb from Limb in order to maximize the consistency to be able to cast it. Also, Tear Limb from Limb by itself is basically a blue six damage go again, which fits nicely into the deck. Besides Tear, we have opted into 10 other blues in the form of Wrecker Romp, Sand Sketch Plan, Barraging Beatdown, and one Ivor Fidia. Primarily for Pitch, but if you find yourself with two in hand, they have their own powerful effects when cast. The Ivor Fidia is almost necessary as it can set up guaranteed hits off Berserk with the Opt. But if you don't have access to Ivor Fidia, we would suggest using Blue High Roller as a fourth copy of Viraging Beatdown. The hardest matchups for the OTK Reinar are heroes that can consistently disrupt us. So we have a semi-transformative cyborg to play a more mid-range romping club plan. And this lets us play off of two to three card hands and try and outvalue the opponent. We use this plan against heroes like Lexi or Azalea and also Icelander. In these matchups, we swap out the weaker go again attacks such as Breakneck Battery, Wild Ride, and Barraging Bighorn. And this makes Savage Beatdown a lot harder to cast, so we also trim two of those. We also sideboard in two Alpha Rampage, three CNC, three Reckless Swing, and two Swing Big. We also swap our combo equipment into Crown of Providence and Romping Club against the Rangers, but we keep Skullhorn against Icelander. Yo, what up? It's Tug. So we're gonna run you through what your typical combo turns are gonna be looking like with this build. As you can see, all you really need is a Berserk, but in this case, we also got a Blood Rush, so we can absolutely kill from 28 here, even through blocks. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start off with the Barkbone Strapping. We roll a five, super lucky. Uh, Skull Crushers activates off that. Play the Berserk and the Blood Rush for free off the two free resources. Berserk draws us a card, Alpha Rampage, and then we draw two more from Blood Rush, which draws us into another Blood Rush. Uh, we do it again, we draw into a wild ride off the Berserk this time, we'll draw in two more blues. Um, then it's pretty easy from here, we've just got infinite resources, so we're going to send in a Mandible Claws for eight go again here. Uh, the opponent correctly blocks because he doesn't know if we're going to intimidate the rest of his hand, so quickly blocks there, but I don't think it matters. Uh, pitch another blue, we're going to swing in for eight go again once again. Uh, as you can see, we still got four cards in hand after presenting 16 go again, and he's got no cards left to block with. Uh, here you see the power of Ivor Fidia, enabling us to bottom the two cards on top since they weren't attacks with six for the Berserk. Uh, we still miss, it reveals a Blood Rush Bellows on top, but obviously it doesn't matter. We're going to be swinging in for 11 go again now. Uh, and we still got two floating and five resources, so we just do it again. And yeah, so that's your 30 damage combo on turn four. Pretty simple, what you really need is the Berserk and Blood Rush, and then you set. So, back to being it. Dynasty has solely spawned this archetype due to the printing of Berserk and high quality support cards. If you're interested in seeing what other archetypes Dynasty has created, we discuss it in our set review here. We out.